is part of the team and, and, and part of the the, 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 the policy has changed tremendously. And what gets actually implemented is almost a caricature of what was decided at the beginning. This is going to happen today, I mean, just to give you a more concrete example, with the stimulus package signed by President Obama. Number one, not, not only did he make the mistake of letting Congress make the decision making about the stimulus package with a bunch of congressmen putting pork projects, you know, just things that have nothing to do with stimulating the economy as part of the thing, which was a big mistake to begin with. But now is the time when the, the, the bureaucracies that are going to fix, the, you know, spend the money in infrastructure and the bureaucracies that need to create jobs need to talk to federal bureaucracies, state level bureaucracies, city level bureaucracies, and only in a few years from now are we going to find out just how effectively that those $700 billion were spent. And I'm willing to bet that when we actually check how those $700 billion were spent, they had, they, they, a, a large chunk of the money would have been wasted but through uh, problems of implementation of policies. So the most important thing about conceiving of governments as made out of many organizations with their authority they, you know, emerging from the obedience by all those organizations, from those organizations believing that the federal government is in fact legitimate, what this creates is a non-monolithic entity. We start thinking about government as a very complex entity, which, which, and we begin give, being able to explain certain historical episodes due to the how hard it is to implement policies, particularly in large countries. Because there's so many organizations involved, each one with its own interests, each one with its own career bureaucrats that may disagree with one another, that may have turf wars, that may have jurisdictional problems, and all of which changes and deforms or uh, distorts the original goals. So, people who think with the concept of the state alone, tend to think as if implementation was a magical thing. This affects in particularly Marxists. Remember how Marxists, and <laughs> he looks at me like, what the hell are you talking to me? <laughs> Remember how Marxists thought it was so easy to fix things. You just have to do the revolution, right? <laughs> revolution means that a community, a guerrilla, a group of people following a charismatic leader, or perhaps an, an organization, rather, because it's a, 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 an organization with a charismatic leader, all he has to do is take over a certain government organization, which is the executive organization, then from that office, cancel the parliament, or you know, declare a null or invalid any other organization that could check you. And once you do that, bingo. You're just going to be able to plan everything very rationally and everything is going to become implemented perfectly. Precisely because they did not think about the complexity of implementation, they only thought about planning. Now, planning is a complex thing, but planning is something that can be solved by a few people, you know, Fidel Castro and, 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 his, and, his, and his circle of trusted guys, this plan was going to happen to Cuba. But once you start implementing those plans, is when you begin to realize that planning is not so simple. That it was not just a matter of winning the revolution, right? That you needed to, to, in, to, 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 to destroy a government, a previous government, through a revolution, to start a new thing, but that the, that the, most, that the most difficult things were going to happen after you win the guerrilla war. They thought that the hardest thing was to win the guerrilla war. My favorite example here is Che Guevara. When they win the Cuban Revolution, and they are already in power, they begin making changes, and, and uh, Fidel Castro offers uh, 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 Che Guevara the, the post of uh, the, the director of the banking system, the director of the financial system of Cuba. You know, he said, you know, we need somebody that's going to be a, a strong presence with lots of charisma and because we need to implement a way, you know, we are 70 miles away from the United States, they're going to try to sabotage everything we do with embargoes and stuff, as it happened. 
So we're going to need a very strong banking system so that, so that they don't manipulate our currency and they don't, they don't try to sabotage us economically. If you, if, if che Guevara answered, why should we do that? Man? You know, there's a, there's a teleological, there's a goal-directed process of history that's going to take us from socialism to communism automatically. We already won the revolution. Everything now is in automatic pilot. Just put in automatic pilot, we're going to go directly into the utopia of the future. I'm going to go to Bolivia and fight another revolution because that's the hard part. No, Che Guevara, if that is your real name. <laughs> the hard part was to create a banking system. The hard part was to create an industrial system for Cuba. The hard part was to solve the unfair relationship between Havana as a city and a bunch of other towns that Havana was exploiting because of its size. The hard part is going to be implementing all these ideas, not just having the ideas, implementing them when you have to deal with an entire ecology of organizations with different jurisdictions. The jurisdiction of the entire island, the jurisdiction of the region of which Havana is part, and the jurisdiction of the Havana city itself. Because nobody thinks about implementation, and that is the fault of that little silly, goofy concept over here. This is what makes you forget about implementation. Once you think of federal governments as emerging from the day-to-day -day interactions between all those organizations that are part of the government, and, and, and that's not functioning properly, if any of these organizations at the different levels of jurisdiction don't work, then we begin forgetting how hard it is not to arrive at decisions but for, for plans for the future or for policies, for implementing those policies. So, let's put this, an emergent capacity to implement. Haven't you Which used is the very Haven't you used the general uh, generalization and the very much reified category when you said that you know in general Marxists believe that? Because this is not the case at all. Oh, okay. For example, after um, um, after they won the civil war in Russia, Lenin in power immediately said immediately um, uh, went into the issue of implementation immediately said all the power to the Soviets. Immediately. Yeah, and how long did that last? So from this you want to make a historical judgment? No, 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 no not to make, to make a judgment that they did not know how hard it was going to be to do that. Of course that. it is hard. Of course it is hard. They but you want to extract from that what you said yesterday that it is that way, but it could equally not be that way. You are cancelling what you said yesterday. Oh, no, 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 I'm not cancelling because I'm not saying it's a necessity. You know, in, in smaller countries, smaller than the Soviet Union, it's much easier to implement things. It just things get harder with scale. So I'm not generalizing here. I'm saying, for instance, in the case of the Soviet Union, remember that Lenin simply changed the name of the secret intelligence organization. Don't think about the Soviets, because the Soviets are the kind of romantic part of it. Think of what he did with the KGB. The KGB was born when Lenin simply changed the name of the Okhrana, which was the, the Tsarist very oppressive espionage organization and converted it into the KGB. He didn't do any kind of creative organizational thinking that, you know, we're going to need a new type of intelligence agency, one that actually does not oppress the people, one that works for people. Did he do that? No, he didn't do that. He simply changed the name. Why? Because it was extremely hard to invent at that point you know, particularly during World War I and, 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 and then when, when, when the Soviet Union began being, you know, sabotaged by other countries and so on. Uh, and eventually, what none of them, you know, and how long did it take for it to, to become a dictatorship under Stalin? I mean, 10 years, 13 years? That's this amount of time. Man. I mean, in other words, if the, if, if the plans had actually had some kind of substance behind them, they would not be able to be corrupted that fast. The fact of the matter is that there is not a single word about implementation in the works.